us, of course, when they're sick, they're not the same. This is a very important subject because so many people have gut problems today because they were fed starch too young as babies. The other enzyme that's in the mouth, you have sublingual glands under your tongue and they release lingual lipase. And lingual lipase is an enzyme that breaks down short and medium chain fatty acids. So the tylen breaks down the starch and saturated fat, which is your medium and short chain fatty acids, are broken down in the mouth. Now the most amazing and beneficial saturated fat is the coconut. So coconut is unique. The breakdown begins in the mouth. It's an amazing oil. Now let's move on down to the esophagus. The food starts to come down here. By the way, before we move on, there are exposed bone in your mouth. What are they called? Teeth. And they have a purpose, and that is to break up the food into very tiny particles. Did everyone hear that? Very tiny particles. I was at a restaurant one day, and the lady just across me, I think there were two, two chews swallow. Two chews swallow. I thought, whoa, her poor stomach. <laughs> The poor organs down there, they don't know what's coming down there. There are no teeth in the stomach. Mm. What's the old saying? We should chew our drinks and we should drink our food. What does that mean? We should be chewing up our food until it's almost liquid. It's a good idea to put the knife and the fork down between mouthfuls and look at the view. If you've got a nice view outside your dining room window, we're such a fast society today, we usually just eat too fast. I think it's such an enjoyable time of the day, why don't we rush it? Some people say, well, I rush it because when I was a kid, my brother, if I didn't hurry up and eat, he'd eat my food. Yes, those sorts of things may start to happen. So it's important to chew, chew, chew. Why? Because there are no teeth in the stomach. And when you chew, you break the food down to tiny particles, which means there's a greater surface area for the enzymes to work on. And also, when you chew, you are mixing the food with saliva, and, and in the saliva are these enzymes, so the breakdown can begin to happen. There's something else. When you're chewing, messages are going to the brain. And the brain says, ah, oh, there's a bit of starch in there. Ah, oh, there's a bit of fat in there. Ah, oh, there's a bit of protein in there. And then it sends messages down to the pancreas, down to the stomach saying, yep, yep, there's a bit of protein coming. Yeah, there's a bit. Can you see what's happening here? And the other organs are getting ready. But three chews swallow, three chews swallow. These organs are saying, what's coming? And the brain says, oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, we, we don't know. It's not in there. <laughs> Can you see there are several reasons why we need to chew, 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 chew. Coming down the esophagus, there's a gateway in the stomach. It's in a double, double layered gateway and it's called the cardiac sphincter. And the cardiac sphincter opens when the muscles tighten to let the food through. And then as we get into the stomach, we get another stage of digestion. So the stomach is an alkaline, no, acid environment. In fact, that's the only part of the body that is acid. It's the only part of the body that should be acid. And tomorrow night, we're gonna be looking at the acid alkaline balance in the body. So the only part of our body that should be acid is the stomach. And if someone says to me, I've got a very acid stomach, I say, fantastic. It should be. But how do you know it's acid? Well, it hurts. Well, it shouldn't hurt. You see, we've got a thick mucosa law lining on that stomach. So you shouldn't feel your acid. I can't feel my acid. Someone else said, well, it keeps coming up. Well, that's not the acid. The acid's not the problem. And by the way, if it keeps coming up, it can burn holes in the esophagus and the person can get an ulcerated esophagus. Can you see now it's not the acid? 
The problem's not the acid, the problem is that gait. So why isn't that strong? Well, there are many people today who are eating breakfast like a pauper, lunch like a pauper, and the tea is the king and the queen together because they're so busy. And so when they lay down or sit down in their easy chair to watch the television and fall asleep and then they go to bed, there's this huge amount of food in the stomach. And when the sun goes down, our body knows it goes down. And when the sun goes down, the whole body slows down. When the sun goes down, digestion doesn't happen as effect effectively and efficiently as it does at lunchtime and as it does at, at breakfast. You've heard of circadian rhythm? Circadian rhythm is set in our body by light and dark signals. When the sun goes down, there's a whole lot of messages going into the brain. So di we don't digest as well as an evening as we do at breakfast and lunch. So having a big meal and it start, gravity causes it to push against those little valves there and it weakens it. And that cardiac sphincter, it's called the cardiac sphincter because of its relationship, its nearness to the heart. It's a muscle like this. And when it tenses, it opens. And when it's relaxed, it's closed. Now the mineral that is a muscle relaxant is magnesium. So everyone that comes to Misty Mountain Health Retreat that's got reflux or heartburn it's called, because we serve breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen and tea like a pauper, and we give them magnesium supplements three times a day and just before bed, they go home without the heartburn. Easy fixed. I had one guy come and he'd been on Nexium or the equivalent for 15 years. Is it working? 15 years? And by the way, you know what they're finding now? Long-term antacids is causing or contributing to colon cancer because the protein's not getting broken down because there's not enough acid to break it down. And so partially digested protein goes all the way down here. Extra bacteria has to be created to try and deal with the partially digested protein and that can contribute to damaging the wall of the colon. Whew. I have never met anyone with an over acid stomach. It actually doesn't happen. By the way, dogs, they've got about six times higher acid content in their stomach than humans. Do they get reflux? Do they get stomach ulcers? No. <laughs> they need that extra acid because they're meat eaters and they need a lot of acid to break that down and get it through that body quickly. So let's have a look at the stomach.